I never really had an opportunity to play the Mega Man X series, as the original series appealed to me more for whatever reason. I always made a note to myself whenever I saw a re-release of the first X game that I needed to play these games sometime during my lifespan. So for me, Mega Man X Legacy Collection was like killing four birds with one stone. While this first collection is very much an exercise in redundancy, solid platforming mechanics and a good presentation make this collection of titles worth a look. Mega Man X Legacy Collection features the first four titles in the series. Mega Man X, Mega Man X2, and Mega Man X3 were all released for the Super Nintendo back in the mid-1990s. I like the new gameplay mechanics they added, like wall jumping and dashing. It still feels like a Mega Man game, but updated for the Super Nintendo era. These first three titles all look and play the same, with a few changes here and there to freshen things up a tad. It's not necessarily a bad thing, but it does get repetitive after a while. X4, released for the PlayStation in 1997, is a lot like the first three games but with better graphics and music. There's also anime cutscenes spliced throughout which, while nice to look at, are voiced so astonishingly bad. Mega Man 8's voice acting was bad, but you don't know the definition of bad until you've gone through X4's stilted garbage. They make me sound like an accomplished voiceover artist. Now go, destroy him. That's an order. All four games carry the same tough platforming action that the series is well known for. You will get hit, and there are plenty of trial and error moments throughout each stage that can easily hinder progress. The Rookie Hunter mode alleviates things, especially for someone like me who is just getting into the series. Weirdly, how it helps you depends on which games you play. The first three games lets you take more hits for little damage, but not much else. X4 gives you 9 lives, lets you take the extra hits, and prevents you from falling into spikes or ledges. This is great for newcomers, I just wish it were a bit more consistent in each game. Other bonuses to the collection are nice, but nothing substantial. The typical museum and filter modes are fun to tinker around and explore for a while, but it's nothing amazing. I like the default filter the collection has, as it gives the games a more polished look. I'm pretty sure I'm in the minority when it comes to things like that, however, so you can always turn off the filters if you wish. The new boss rush mode is pretty fun, where you select specific weapons and go after three sets of two bosses that you fight at the same time. It's a nice time waster once you familiarize yourself with the series. The first Mega Man X collection is a nice set of titles that come with some pretty nice extras. All four games are too similar to one another to really stand out, but the platforming is strong enough that it can provide a fun challenge for platformer enthusiasts. The second version of the Mega Man X Legacy Collection combines the last four Mega Man X games for those who are fans of the series' later titles. Unlike the first collection, which doesn't differentiate much from the set formula, these games actually do try to spice things up with new gameplay elements. The end result is questionable at best. Though it does provide solid gameplay for the most part, Mega Man X Collection 2 is a far more flawed collection than its predecessor. If you enjoy challenging platforming titles, X5 and X6 are likely going to be your favorites. Both are fantastic options, but if I had to choose, X5 had better level design than X6, which was frustrating to get through at times. Neither are particularly revolutionary, but play well overall. One word of warning, if you've only played the earlier X titles, you may be surprised by the amount of dialogue. The X series have always revolved around the Reploid struggles against the Mavericks, but going through mountains of text to get through the next area can be a chore. Even during gameplay, Assistant Aaliyah is always there to say something. As someone who just wants to go in and do it the old trial and error way, this was pretty lame. X7 brought the biggest changes to the formula as this is the first Mega Man X game in 3D. Parts of stages are played in 2.5D, which are fine, but problems begin when the camera shifts to 3D and it has to be moved manually, 
This turns into a giant chore when trying to figure out how to clear an area. Deaf perception issues based on the camera's position behind you, bad voice acting, and data graphics make X7 the weakest title in the series. X8 ditched the 3D concepts and returns the series to its roots, though it kept the 2.5 style of graphics that make it look a bit too dated for my liking. It's everything that 7 should have been, an updated version of the X series that feels like the breath of fresh air the series had needed for so long. Axel's rapid fire abilities are also a great addition to these last two titles. X Legacy Collection 2 is just okay. X5 and X6 look great and provide fun platforming, though both fall victim to uninspiring stories and a lot of dialogue. X7 should be commended for trying to change things up, but the switch to 3D falls flat. X8 is much more polished, and it is probably the best title in the collection. The collection overall is probably best for those who are nostalgic for the PlayStation 1 and 2 era Mega Man games. Otherwise, there are much better platformers on Switch with better variety.